What does it feel like? Hello. We are here today for dissociation. <laughs> Welcome back, goblins. Today we're gonna do something pretty unseen, talk through a dissociative episode on camera. This is more so their dissociative episode. I'm just here to ask some questions that were sent in from Instagram. Personally, I'm dissociating my butt off right now, so I'm already in this <laughs> episode, so this is theirs. Yeah, no, we feel a dissociative <laughs> episode coming on, and we thought this would be the perfect time to film. We've wanted to do this video for a while but have never caught the dissociative episode before it's gotten, like, into the dissociation portion. So, also, a clarification for those of you asking us questions. Dissociation does not equal switching, and switching does not always equal dissociation. Dissociation can lead to a switch, but switches are different than dissociation. Dissociation can exist uh, without a switch completely independently from that, so, so I'm they not... differ. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not going to be answering questions about switching or dissociating into the headspace or anything like that. I'm going to be answering questions about dissociation and what it feels like and what I'm going through. Because, I, I mean, we, we filmed the lesser scene side of the DID, and I have not seen a single DID YouTuber do a video such as this. <laughs> like, full-on dissociative episode, start to finish. So, I'm going to be, like, writing it to... Right now, I'm pretty grounded. Like, I can feel myself slightly dissociated which is perfect for what we're doing today um and i will go into a dissociative episode which you guys will see and ours aren't like graphic or anything we kind of stare off into space and feel very out of body um but trigger warning for any of those watching that dissociate when others dissociate and your dissociation can lead to some un uncanny things. We want you to be safe and know that we're not censoring this video at all. So please, your discretion is advised. So I forgot to introduce myself when we did the intro. My name is Kane, and I am one of the alters that very heavily dissociates most of the time. So this is not anything new for me, and this is just catching what I already do anyway on camera. Um, yeah, so I'm just, like, here. <laughs> Alright, what questions do we got as I go into this? Okay, so one is, is it like a dreaming state for you guys? Like a dreamlike state? No. We're, like, disconnected, but it's, like, more third-person-y, like, viewing from the outside rather than a dream. Mm hmm Do they hurt sometimes? They can. Sometimes they give us headaches right behind our ears. But most of the time, we just kind of feel floaty. That works, because, like... Like, what does it feel like when you're dissociating, like, sensory-wise? Yeah, it feels pretty floaty, and we feel very disconnected from pretty much everything. Talking gets harder, moving gets harder, like, sometimes it feels like we're moving ahead of ourselves. Right now, really the only thing that's dissociating is my forehead. <laughs> Is it possible to go mute, like feeling the mouth isn't yours during a dissociative episode? Yeah, we've done that quite a bit. It, like, latches on to the fact that it's harder to talk when you dissociate, so it's easier for somebody to, like, make you not have control. 
which is why it's easier to switch when you're dissociated. Can you hear other alters talking to you when you dissociate? I mean, I'm not disconnected from the system. I'm just disconnected from the body. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Is it normal to feel overly tired or fatigued and end up just sort of collapsing during one? We've never collapsed from a dissociative episode. But we have gotten really tired and fallen asleep before. But I don't think we've ever collapsed. It's mostly just kind of sitting and spacing out. You, you've been so dissociated, your legs don't really work too good sometimes. I don't know if you've actually fallen, though. I don't think we've ever actually fallen. I think that was more so a panic attack. Yeah. Those do it, too. Oh, yeah. Panic attacks are awful we'll we'll probably do another video on that mm -hmm. do you always know if you're dissociating no <laughs> sometimes it's really hard to tell if you're dissociated when you're already dissociated most of the time we get called out like hey what are you doing and then we get pretty dissociated Yeah. Do colors look the same? Sometimes. Sometimes they look sharper. Like, sometimes things go high definition for some reason. Which is, like, the opposite of what it's supposed to do. But other times it gets really blurry and far away. How would you describe dissociation metaphorically? I don't know a good metaphor for it. I just kind of describe it as floating. Or like, the way people usually relate it is if you're driving a car and you don't remember how you got home. But you know you drove the whole way. That's kind of what it's like. A lot of heavy dissociation makes memory really hard to grasp onto. And right now, my arms are like getting really heavy. <laughs> and it's like getting harder to move. And we kind of pick one spot to stare at. How many times a day do you dissociate? So many. <laughs> Usually at work, we're a little bit more focused, but sometimes we'll dissociate several times during work. And we kind of ground ourselves by doing little knickknacks, like drawing, because we work from home now. And so we'll, we'll draw something, even if it's not great. You know, it brings our attention to something. Um, we have these little diamond painting things. You put the diamonds on the sticky paper. Those help pretty well. But I can't give a definite amount of times we dissociate in one day. Yeah, that does vary. Do you experience, or where do you experience headaches when you dissociate? Mostly here in this like band area. I feel like this is like a stress band. But it goes pretty much around the entire head. When's the first time you remember dissociating? Probably like eight or nine. We really dissociated into the inner world. Max in particular didn't realize the inner world was what it was. 
would be very dreamy. I feel like kids who dissociate a lot are probably, like, described as dreamy a lot. Like, that's a dreamy child. Because they're so in the clouds. But those are warning signs, guys. <laughs> Ask your child what's wrong with them. <laughs> I really... Does your body have a tingling sensation with the, with the dissociation? Definitely. Right now, my legs, like, my calves are tingling. And it kind of feels like they tingle and then things are lifting. So it has, like, a lofty sensation. And it's almost like the body is trying to hold on to whatever is, like, lifting. But it's not. And so it creates the tingling sensation. That's the, hitting that in the roof of my mouth right now. <laughs> uh, would you say the tingling sensation is scary? This person says it, it, it's, it's scary to them. It depends on the altar that's fronting when it's happening. Some of our littles don't like that sensation. And quite a few of them do dissociate a lot. And they experience that, and for them, it feels more like adrenaline than the tingling that we know it as. The littles interpret that as, like, adrenaline and anxiety. Does your vision change? If so, how? Yeah, it almost feels like we're watching through like a box or something and it's kind of getting further away but the the amount is not what is that like a when you put a cardboard thing up to your eye and it kind of feels like your distance from whatever it is that's you're looking at <laughs> it's like those little boxes you can like move the picture yeah I forgot what those are called but they exist can you trigger a dissociative episode by only thinking about it? I know some alters can in our system, but most of the time it's not about like thinking about the dissociative episode that could happen. It's more like, for example, in the last few days, we've been wanting to film this video and we had been dissociating for like three weeks straight and when we decided we wanted to do this video solidly we stopped dissociating so it was almost like the opposite of your question and today i don't even remember what really happened to trigger the dissociative episode but sometimes dissociation just happens why do it? <laughs> um, but some things can trigger it, like loud noises, having to talk to somebody constantly, um, social interactions, like certain forms of media, movies. You could dissociate into a book. We've done that where we've read like seven pages and then we go, wait, what did I just read? <laughs> Music. Music, definitely. My eyes are dissociating now, so things are like getting wobbly. <laughs> Do you experience ticks with dissociation? Ticks being... What would a tick during dissociation be? Like that, that head twitch that was happening to me a few seconds ago, like, you know, like when you kind of just... Oh, no. Our head kind of falls to the side sometimes, but that's about it. Oh, yeah, that's an involuntary one. <laughs> <laughs> Not them, but us. <laughs> Did you recognize your dissociation before you knew you had DID? No. 
we didn't know what dissociation was and we just got in trouble for daydreaming all the time. Mood. Is there a lag time if you try to move or speak when you're dissociating? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Like I was mentioning earlier, so my, my arms are pretty fully dissociated. I can move them, but it doesn't feel like I'm moving them. It feels like... I don't know if any of you have had a tube TV where you waved your hand in front of it and it looked like your hand was like moving really, really fast, but it wasn't because the screens were just that way. But it kind of feels like what that looks like. <laughs> what you would think that would feel like. It kind of feels like the hand is like moving behind where it is. And speaking, sometimes you don't sound like yourself at all. And that can include singlets too. I know some singlets have talked and just been like, wait, what did I just say? That didn't sound like me. <laughs> like that's just a dissociative episode. It's a thing. It affects your hearing and how you see your surroundings. Hmm. No one's asking if they're similar to bipolar episodes, but I, we don't know that. I mean, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think some people with bipolar experience dissociation as well. I mean, minus the alters. And plus more, I think, emotion symptoms. Uh, let's see, people are asking about grounding, but I'll save that for when we're trying to ground. Does it get worse the more alters you have? Or does alter number affect that at all? I don't think it affects it at all because we dissociated just as hard when we were a child as we do now. And that's a lot. <laughs> do different emotions trigger different types of dissociation? Like anger dissociation versus like scared dissociation or happy? Yeah. I mean, they feel different in different ways but it's more energy. It's kind of like how you feel while you're dissociating. And sometimes emotions can make dissociating harder. Like it's harder for us to dissociate when we're angry. We feel more in tune with that emotion But when we're sad, it's really easy to dissociate. It's like the easiest emotion for us to dissociate with. Because I feel like the emptiness is just like you want to get away. I don't know how to describe the different types of dissociation in that regard. How long can dissociative episodes last? Dissociative episodes for us have lasted about a week before. Where it feels like we just can't get anything done. Because we're so dissociated. And it's really hard to do literally anything. Do you get paralyzed or unable to move? I mean, right now I can't really move my head upwards. I've been trying, but it's not really working. <laughs> so I guess, yes. How do you get yourselves back in movement? Back in... 
like after like you get stuck in those paralyzed times is it just like grounding yeah it's mostly just grounding and like slowly noticing little things like if i were to attempt to try and like look around i would choose something that's really close to me like your leg your legs really close to me and so my head would like go more towards that if that's what i was trying to do mm-hmm. is a dissociative episode different for each system i'm sure it is i mean it differs from alter to alter so i would imagine it differs from system to system Would an alter feel sluggish after a long episode? Definitely. (laughs) Dissociating, even though it looks very energy conserving, is very strenuous at times. Mm -hmm. And you can feel like you just ran a marathon after you ground yourself. Especially if you're fighting the dissociation. If you fight with your dissociation, it's harder afterwards to recover i feel like whereas if you just let it happen and write it out it's usually less so because you're not fighting yourself the whole way forgetting to blink is such a dissociation culture oh Oh. (laughs) were you forgetting to blink oh man i hadn't (laughs) blinked in so long I just started tearing up and I was like, wait, blinking exists. Some questions weren't exactly about this video, so we're saving them for later. I think that's almost all about the dissociation video let me just check Uh, oh there's so much on that on the screen right now (laughs) oh god i forgot to wear my glasses We actually need these things to see. We just don't wear them because they reflect on camera sometimes. (laughs) When is it most inconvenient to dissociate? When you're at work and you're talking to a customer and you forget what you were just saying. Or when you're having a really intense conversation and you had something really important to say, but now you can't reach it because that dissociation point is too far away. Is dissociation depressing for you? Afterwards, when this person comes to you, they feel very numb. Repeat the question. <clears throat> Is dissociation depressing for you? This person says afterwards, when they come to, they feel so numb. Usually we feel really numb while dissociating. And coming out of it, sometimes we get really emotional. Or like, hyper ecstatic before just feeling exhausted. So I don't think it's really depressing for us. I think it's just exhausting at times. And when we go through these like several times a day, it's 
so much. And we definitely use our phone as a dissociation barrier crutch. <laughs> so we can like not dissociate constantly or we can look at our phone and actually hold a full conversation even if we're slightly dissociated because there's something solid to focus on. The rest is just questions about grounding. We could get into that now or keep dissociating for a minute. We can keep dissociating. My hands <laughs> are not my hands. At least I don't feel like it. It doesn't really feel like I'm moving much. Kind of feels like if I were attached to strings, like some higher self is moving for me, but I'm the higher self. <laughs> Dissociation doesn't have to be constantly serious. We, we joke a lot of the times when we're dissociated. Because sometimes it helps to ground us. Sometimes it can be pretty funny. Do you have any questions about what we're feeling? Does, how does sound and audio get affected by dissociation for you, for like your system? Sometimes it really depends on like who's dissociating. Because for some people, everything sounds so far away and you can't quite hear what's going on. For me, it gets a little echoey and hard to hear. And so, I like when people speak quieter, because usually I'm very heavily dissociated, and I can hear quiet tones a lot easier. And right now it feels like I'm probably about here. Like, that's where my face feels like it should be. Whoa. <laughs> that's whack. So it's definitely a heavy dissociative episode. Because usually we just kind of feel heavy. We just feel very ahead of ourselves right now. Or behind ourselves. I don't know how to describe that exact experience. I feel like there's a hole where my face should be. Yeah. It's just, like, there's, there's an Instagram filter that does that. It just takes your whole face off and just makes it, like, a pit. <laughs> and that's what it's feeling like right now. Uh. And sensations don't feel like sensations. Like, I could itch my nose but it doesn't feel like itching feels like i would have to really dig my nail into my skin to feel it so we definitely lose sense of feeling like it's harder to to make our body feel something when we're dissociated Do you have anything else? I'm trying to think of something. Huh.
This, this is the kind of things that usually we cut out in videos. But we are not, because this is a dissociative episode. <laughs> and it's what we're filming for. Today, you just get to see it, just how much we space out sometimes. Sometimes we cut out, like, a half hour worth of just this. <laughs> not even lying. And, and back to the, does it feel scary? The tingling does not. To some people, the sense of losing themselves or not feeling in touch definitely scares some because they don't always realize what's happening as it's happening. And then once they realize they're in a dissociative episode, they feel calmer and are able to ground themselves a lot easier. They have to realize it first. Yeah, like, sometimes it doesn't always feel like dissociation. Like, some of that tingling is like, oh man, is this like a stroke? But if it just be the dissociation, then it's chill. It feels like I'm falling. Sometimes it can feel like you're falling. That can yeah. be scary. That, that's a feeling that a lot of alters get over here. We've got like a specific alter for that. It's, it's wild. Because he's like trying to switch out, which is annoying, but he's safe. Okay, on to the grounding questions, if you can't think of anything else. Because I'm already doing a grounding technique. <laughs> some what is your grounding technique? Some, sometimes the body will auto-try to ground itself, and you can't really see it. I don't know if you can adjust the phone camera down. Oh, man. But we're like running our thumbnail up and down our arm. And that's one of our grounding techniques. It, I mean, it's like an autopilot technique to try and get somebody to solidly front in the body. And so we kind of do that until we start feeling it more. And like, we don't do it very hard hard we just kind of it's just kind of like rubbing your nail like kind of an itch type feeling when you're scratching an itch but that's definitely one of our techniques and our body does that itself because it's like trying to wake itself up or something i don't know <laughs> it's kind of cool what can someone do to help ground you if you're heavily dissociating? For us, like, touching one of our shoulders definitely helps. Yeah, because then you can feel the other, that's something outward that you can't control. You can control blankets, and you can control what you're physically doing sometimes. <laughs> but you can't control what another person is really doing. And as long as you know them and they have consent and you know they won't mind you being touched or vice versa, it's a good way. Various textures are good to ground. <laughs> I don't know why my hand is just grasping. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, where's the advice? Advice for grounding. Just advice for it. That's some good advice. Um, finding something that is grabbing, like 
if you see a bright color that's grabbing, you can look at that and kind of like put yourself there. Um, another way we kind of ground ourselves is like we feel what we're sitting on and we try to like feel ourselves into our legs like really try and feel what underneath us look looks like <laughs> feels like i have a charlie horse in my foot that's mm -hmm. grounding <laughs> ouchie uh. um and then oh god stop charlie horsing so i can continue dissociating for education <laughs> That's a heck of a way to ground. Your body's really forced grounding you there. Yeah. Our body really likes to ground us sometimes. Um, and then trying to look at different things. Like, if you can, move your eyes. Like, there's a AC remote. We have an AC unit. There's an AC remote there. And so I've kind of gotten my eyes up. And then... From there, you can kind of go to socks, because Ether's socks are... Your system pride. <laughs> Look at them. They're awesome. <laughs> they even got stripes on the back. But they're, they're fun to look at, so I look at that. And then Thick Boy is sitting on the other side of the camera. He's, he's being good and just chilling out. So good to ground. Yes. And then I look up further, you know, just to the next thing in the room. And kind of, like, just continue that pathway. Until I can lift my head more. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the good ones. Um. Let's see. If you have long hair, you could play with your hair. I don't do that very often, because I don't honestly like the way the hair feels. Or rubber bands. They're good, because if you even go like this, you kind of have to feel your hands to do that. So we use this one as well. We like to play with things when we're grounding anything really if it has texture to it if it's bendable if it's solid and and we can like fully put pressure on it that's really nice or like we have tea stained paper that we recently made that's really fun to play with and the sound kind of snaps us back into place just makes me think of how i'm literally subconsciously grounding with my jacket right now <laughs> Just like, you know, running my thumbnail along the, uh, like, the zipper part of it, because it's plastic and bumpy. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, I'm starting to feel, I can start to feel my hands again. I'm, I feel like I'm speaking mo co more coherently. Um... And, like, I'm starting to get more cognitive. Like, it feels like a brain fog, honestly. It feels like you're trying to work through a brain fog. Just, like, a cloud that just, like, rolls through. Yeah. And then... Let's see. It's another good way of grounding. You have like neck ticks, you can like massage the back of your neck, and that helps because Jesus Christ, those things can make you sore sometimes. I felt the itch on my nose, so that's something. Um, what else? Is there another question? I think that's about it. Uh, wait, I think there might have been one. Um, See, this one I think could work in therapy. We associated a lot when therapists use big words. What things can we use to help us stay in? Then it cuts off. So like in focus. 
Um, you don't have to stay in focus when you're in therapy, to be honest. Your therapist can tell, at, at least if they're a good one, your therapist can tell when you're dissociating and when you need grounding steps. <laughs> um, so usually, honestly, I would on ask your, ask your therapist what would be an ideal. Let them know what's going on. Um, and I guess, like, bringing something to, to have your focus on, it's, it's kind of ADHD culture to play with things, but it's also dissociation culture. It helps you to, like, stay on what you're doing. We also draw to ground ourselves. Um, like I said earlier, the diamond paintings that we have, those are really good to ground ourselves, especially when we're working, because they give you something intense and specific to focus on. You have to find the number. <laughs> it's like color by number with rhinestones. They're so cool. Color by numbers. Um, as for Little's dissociating, color. stuff... Sorry. <laughs> Stu stuffed animals help a lot. Um, our littles, when they feel dissociated, they will play with a stuffed animal or, or pet it or play with its ears or anything like that um, until the sun comes up in the morning. <laughs> and that's how they ground themselves. We've started to make stuffed animals with, like, rice in the feet. And... That, that's pretty solid. Um, let's see. Cats. <laughs> My son. Cats are really good to, to help you ground. So now, all that's dissociated right now is like my forehead area, which is where we started. So I think that's a pretty, pretty nice, like, come down. I feel like... This dissociative episode was pretty mellow. Um, sometimes we'll just stare and not be able to do anything. This time, you know, I had the idea in mind that I was going to be speaking. So I was able to continue talking through. But usually my jaw will lock up a little bit and it'll be really hard for me to talk. Do you have anything to input? I'm surprised he just hasn't tried to move at all yet. <laughs> just chilling. Um, oh, there he goes. <laughs> I can't feel my forehead. <laughs> it's, it's like in the roof of my mouth, too. But, like, it's kind of fading. And it hurts. I'm a little sore. <laughs> Um, I feel like temperature also has a way to play into dissociation. When we're hot, we definitely dissociate more. It's harder to focus constantly. Yeah. Which is part of why we got an AC unit, other than us just not liking the heat. <laughs> um, we're totally turning that thing on after, after we're done filming. It's gonna yes. be nice. But yeah, so I know I wasn't super descriptive. At least I don't think I was. Um, even now I can barely remember the start of the dissociative episode besides that it started with my forehead. I, I'm trying to remember what questions you guys ask. And honestly, it's making me feel more dissociated. <laughs> yeah, trying to remember things can make you dissociate. Especially yeah. when you don't have them memories. And, like, this is, you know, kind of what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's not always, oh, another altar fronted, and so we forgot what we were doing. It's also, we dissociated, and those memories, because they're so foggy, are not accessible. It's almost like being blackout drunk. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's kind of how it feels at times. Because you could be fronting the entire time, just like I was, 
that you're dissociating and not remember very much of it. And honestly, I barely remember the questions that I answered and I'm interested to see what I looked like while I was dissociating because I feel like it was a lot. <laughs> um, running cold water over your hands is definitely a good way to come back from dissociating. It's a really intense feeling and sometimes it's not all that pleasant, but if you are in a dissociative episode and you have to be somewhere, um, you know, your your wife is having a baby, <laughs> uh, your your child is having soccer practice, um, your, your friend is, is wanting you to go somewhere, I don't know. Um, it's not always the best experience, but it is a really good way to get yourself out of a dissociative episode because of the intense difference in temperature. But be careful not to burn yourself. That's why I said cold yeah. water. Yeah, use that cold water. Don't use that hot water. <laughs> yeah, it could be ouch. Definitely. Don't use ice water because you could potentially hurt yourself. That could also be ouch. <laughs> but use cold water. Just you like run the tap water cold and put your, your hands under it. And uh, usually that works for us. But yeah, so I don't know what other questions you guys have, but you can post them down in the comments and we'll do our best to answer. Um, if you're interested in those stuffed animals that I was mentioning, we're making some more of them. There's one on our Etsy shop already, and he's pretty cool. He's, he's, a, he's a zebra, and his head got sewn on Cricket, <laughs> and so we just kept it that way. And it, it gives them character. But those, those stuffed animals are really nice. We have... <coughs> the elephant. Yeah, I was wondering where the elephant went. I think I see it. Yeah, let me grab the elephant. Can you stand? So this is kind of what it looks like, but they have eyes. <laughs> um, you know, they have rice. They have rice in the feet. And they're really soft. We definitely use softer materials for these. Um, and they would be like rag washable. I wouldn't put these in the washer because they have rice in them. <laughs> and that could get kind of weird. It could get funky. But it's, it's, it's like even now I'm enjoying this. You can play with the rice or you can just hold the, the soft part. And these are amazing lifesavers, to be honest. And we really enjoy them. So if you have an interest in these, let us know. Because we will be making more of them. And we can also make them with textured fabrics. So it will be pretty sweet. And mm -hmm. he is so cute. He's such a good boy. <laughs> He's getting all the love. This beautiful child. <laughs> He's just hanging out. He's chilling. He's a good man. Alright, well, I want to thank our patrons for supporting us. Thank you. Um, yeah. We have a legendary goblin who's paying $100 a month. Holy cow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and along with Thanks all the... So <laughs> Along with all the other patrons that are paying one to thirty dollars, like anything is amazing, and you guys are awesome. It's so great to have such a supportive bunch of peeps. Yeah, supportive gob squad. You guys yeah. really stick stick it through. We are getting letters sent out, and you should be receiving those soon. So I'm happy to be able to do that and to hear from you guys. All right, do you have anything else yeah. for If you guys can't join our Patreon, don't even worry about it. Just to support us, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button or even just view this video. Like, just by being here. Just by seeing mm. the content and just, just, just being a goblin. <laughs> you guys help so much. Definitely. Like, we would be nothing without all of you, and, and we love all of you. 
and so does Thick Boy. <laughs> he loves you too. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys feel like messaging us, Patreon is probably the best way to do it. We answer to non patrons as well as our patrons. So yeah, you send don't have a... to join that to be a message person there. Yeah, send us a message there because we're it's easier to see for us and for Instagram. Not of a lot of us enjoy like going through and answering DMs when we're just scrolling and wanting to be. Just scrolling. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and like, since there's two of us in one account, it gets kind of confusing, because sometimes one of us opens a message and doesn't see the other message, or responds to a comment that somebody else had already responded <laughs> to, and then it's confusing, so if you want some good, clear, like, office hours or you kind of message stuff, uh, Patreon's a good way to do it. Definitely. We try to be on there, like, every other day to every few days, so check it out. Um, sometimes we post regular content there that is open to everybody, not just patrons. So, check it out and uh, connect with us because we love you guys. Alright, thank you all for watching. Thanks for being goblins. And we will see, see you, you in the, the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs> Can't hurt my tongue. Son, what are you doing? Big boy.